Hey, I'm Brandon's Consumer Code, and I got a review for you guys coming out on this dynamite of a machine. But I was thinking, what if I did a review for things I'm looking forward to this year? So without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing I'm looking forward to is the HTC M10. Now, the M8 is my primary driver. It's an amazing phone. It's got an IR blaster in the front so that you can communicate with televisions, Xboxes, different things like that. It's, it's really an amazingly crafted piece of machinery. And I didn't even get to the speakers on the front. I digress. This is about future forward coming products. Hopefully in the MWC we'll see something very soon about the M10. Its release date is usually in, in March, so this up and coming month we should get something that we can see that's tangible about the device. One other quick tidbit I wanted to talk about with HTC M10 is that I was very disappointed that the M9 didn't hold its ground in terms of ultra megapixel cameras. I think that this technology may not be new, but it's definitely underappreciated. You know, more than likely, any camera can take, I mean, it's 2016, any camera can take a decent picture in decent lighting. However, a true feat is taking a decent camera in bad lighting. And there aren't too many phones that can do that, period. Now, yes, the iPhone is pretty much the Swiss army knife of phones in terms of what it can do, but nothing, no phone really aces it like the HTC M8 does. And I don't want to sound like a salesman for the product, but you have to give product, you have to give credit where credit is due. Otherwise, you end up with a saturated market of all of the same things. So I just wanted to briefly touch upon that. Moving on would be the iPhone 7. I'm really looking forward to this phone. I've never had an Apple phone before, but they're simplistically crafted and so elegantly carried that I really want to get my feet wet in this experience. So now there are a lot of rumors circulating this device, even though it's eight months away from conception. I mean, that's just the territory that I've, the Apple products have in general. However, there are these rumors about it not having a 3.5 millimeter jack. I'm okay with that. I mean, we live in a world today where Bluetooth and Wi-Fi are perfectly convenient and usable methods to stream things. Another thing that Apple is doing is, that, well, rumors are circulating that they're gonna put a dual lens camera in their phone. Now, personally, as a user of the HTC M8, this is nothing new to me. It's something I've been doing for the past two years. However, I would definitely love to see an Apple spin on whatever it is in terms of technology or resolution, you know, because this is with a four megapixel, cam four ultra pixel camera, excuse me. I would love to see the way Apple, uh, you know, bends this technology to their will. If anything that can be said about Apple, it's not that they're innovative, but they do take innovation to the next level. So that is definitely something that we should be out on the lookout for. And hopefully these other companies will also look into what Apple is looking at and, you know, uh, increase the arms race. It's definitely something that as, us as consumers can feed off of forever. Now, yes, will iPhone users be screwed out of the deal? Of course. You guys are always screwed out of your deals. It's nothing new. Every time they have something new, they completely write off any type of tech that was previous. So it's something that you should, you should be used to. Just think about all the extra space that you can get in. I mean, it's definitely something that you should try to detach yourself away from. With 4.0 Bluetooth being around right now, I can barely tell the difference, and that's just me, and I'm pretty heavy into music. I can barely tell the difference. So instead of rejecting it, you should try to embrace it for a little while, and I'm pretty sure if it doesn't work out, they'll probably go back to the uh, 3.5. Then again, on Apple, they'll just make you deal with it. And my third one would have to be MKX Online. Now, I'm a big Mortal Kombat fan. Online has been insufferable. It's pretty terrible with the archaic style of netcode that they use. There is a beta out right now that is preparing players and giving players the opportunity to use certain characters and play online. So I really am looking forward to being able to really test my skills along with uh, friends that I have online against different people across the world in an updated netcode and really being able to enjoy the experience. Number two would have to be 4K televisions. I first saw a 4K television back in 2000, 
14, mid 14, and I was blown away. Like, and I know that we're very far from being able to get 4K in everything. You know, it's 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 not just the television. It's also who broadcasts it. There's a lot of different things that are in play for 4K televisions, but this year is going to be the year for 4K. First of all, it's going to be affordable. You know, it, of course the demand, once the, if the demand is high, the price comes down, but if the demand is low, the prices are going to be skyrocket and something that you can't really attain. But this year alone, I mean, you can get a 4K on Amazon right now for about 300 bucks, 400 bucks. Of course, you can also get one for 39,000. So there's definitely a contrast between what's actually applicable and what isn't, but this is going to be a big year for 4K. I can't wait to get one for my display. And I will be rocking it, and I'll definitely do an unboxing and everything for you guys so you can check it out. And my number one will have to be you guys. I really can't wait to engage with you guys and you know get you guys opinions on what the review is about and if you're going to if you're going to actually use that product or if I can recommend it if you use it and just you know cross chit chat with you guys because I really am looking forward to interacting with you all and being able to exchange information and or techniques and certain things. It's definitely gonna be something fun. And my honorable mentions, well, uh, insurance claims. I don't, know, I don't know how that one made it. Now, we're at a very funky time with smartwatches right now. Like, with the first generation of smartwatches were very impractical. They had horrible battery life, they didn't do much. Google Now wasn't really uh, crafted for it. But we're entering a time now where smartwatches can actually last a whole day. Crazy, just a day, but yeah, a day. And that is a big step forward. And I'm really looking forward to Moto 362. So be on the lookout for the Sportsman version because I will be getting that. And Samsung has been very competitive. Now their watches aren't as pretty as the Motorola watches, but they are very competitive and they're very unique. And another one that's emerging, I think is going to be a sleeper this year, is are the Fitbit smartwatches. They definitely have a good grasp on the fitness variant of uh, technology, but I think if they put a little uh, technological spin on them, I think they'll, be, they'll do very well this year. And the last thing will probably have to be tablets. Tablets are in a very funky space right now. They've kind of been pushed to the side by the updated speed and, 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 and screen size of smartphones, and they've also been kind of pushed aside as the secondary tech because smartwatches have wedged their way in there. So this year, hopefully, we'll start to see a very innovative tablet. The first tablet I ever saw that I wanted was the Motorola Zoom. Never got one, but I did get the um, Nexus 7, and it's around here somewhere. I use it almost every day. But like I said, with smartwatches screens getting so big, uh, they're, they're starting to push out that space that they occupy. And then when you get tablets that aren't really innovative, it costs a lot, it kinda, you know, I'm looking, and I'm looking at you, iPad Pro, with its $800 price tag, I mean, it doesn't really do anything that qualifies. I mean, you might as well just spend a couple hundred bucks and get a, a full working laptop or even a PC with a couple extra hundred dollars on top of that. But that's a whole nother topic. So anyway guys, that's my top five things for most anticipated tech for 2016. I look forward to seeing you guys in the comment box and in the next video. And in the meanwhile, peace.